To work out the shapes of molecules at A level, we use a theory called valence shell electron pair repulsion theory, which in plain English says that electrons in an atom's outer shell will A pair up and B repel as much as they possibly can do when they uh, form covalent bonds. So we can use this theory to work out the shapes of covalent molecules. And to do that, we need to work out um, certain things about the, uh, about the compound uh, or about the molecule before we can work out the shape. The first thing we need to do is work out the number of bonded pairs of electrons. This one's quite straightforward. All we need to do is count up the number of covalent bonds it has. We can ignore um, um, the difference between double and triple and single bonds. We just can simply count up the number of bonds um, it has. So, for example, carbon dioxide, we would say it's got two bonded pairs, even though it's got it's actually got two double bonds. Once we have done that, we then need to work out the number of lone pairs of electrons about the central atom. And this is a little bit more difficult because now we do need to take account of any double or triple bonds. So lone pairs are pairs of electrons that are not located in bonds. I'm going to emphasize the pairs um, pairs but here, a mist mistake that people commonly make is they just count up single electrons. A lone pair has to be a pair of electrons. Um, so let's just look at a few examples of this. I'm going to set up as a table um, of how I would start answering these questions. The first thing we need to know is the number of outer electrons that an atom's got. What we then need to do is work out the number of bonded pairs. And thirdly, the number of lone pairs. And that should allow us to um, work out the shape of our molecule. So just a few examples. Uh, let's start off by thinking about ammonia. NH3. Firstly, ammonia is in group 5 in the periodic table. So about the central atom, there are 5 electrons. How many bonded pairs? Well, it's got three single bonds to hydrogen, so the bonded pairs are simply three. Um, lone pairs. Nitrogen's got five electrons in its outer shell. Three of those electrons will be in bonded pairs, therefore there are two electrons, i.e. one pair of electrons, which are not, um, which are lone pairs. Uh, second example, let's go for what, a bit of a trickier one. Let's go ClF3. Chlorine is, in, chlorine is in group 7, so there's 7 outer electrons. It's got 3 bonds, so 3 bonded pairs of electrons. Now we've got 4 electrons which are not located in bonds. That gives us 2 pairs of electrons which are not in bonds. Um, we can also do this for ionic molecules. Sorry, or charge molecules, sorry. That's way better way to say that. Um, let's, so let's use the example of um, H3O+. Plus. Now, when we come across a charge molecule, what we need to do is um, take the group number of the central atom, in this case oxygen, um, which will be six. It's got a positive charge on this whole molecule, uh, which means we've lost one electron. So we take the group number six and take off one from that. So there are actually five outer electrons about the oxygen. And our bonded pairs, we've got three bonds to hydrogen, so we've got three. Again, we've got um, two electrons here, which are not um, in chem in covalent bonds. So two electrons gives us one lone pair. And from this we can uh, work out the shapes of these molecules. So when we are working out the shapes of these molecules, remember that electron pairs will always repel as much as they possibly can do. However, lone pairs will cause extra repulsion, which will have an effect on the um, shape of the molecule. So I'm going to try and run through this nice and quickly. Let's give an example for each one and look at the shape of it. So the first one, um, if we have two bonded pairs and zero lone pairs, we would get um, a shape that's linear. Examples of this could be beryllium chloride, BeCO2, uh, carbon dioxide would be linear. Um, we would have a central beryllium atom. Because the chlorine, um, oh, because sorry, my electrons are in bonded pairs, those bonded pairs will repel as much as they possibly can do. 
the bond angle between them would be 180 degrees and the name of the shape is linear because the chlorine, beryllium and chlorine atoms are in a straight line. The next shape is uh, three bonded pairs, zero lone pairs. Common examples of this are boron species, so BF3. In this one, I would have a central boron atom. I would have a fluorine to the left. Then I would have a fluorine come towards us, a fluorine going away. What's important to note is this is like, almost like a disc is flat. Um, the way I've drawn it doesn't make it look flat, but this is actually in the plane of the paper. It is a flat molecule. Um, the bond angle between these are, are, is... 120 degrees between all of these uh, uh, fluorine atoms because I've got three bonded pairs the name of the shape is trigonal and because it is flat it's in the plane of the board it's trigonal planar okay next one if I have two bonded pairs and one lone pair an example of this would be something like um, so two. This is going to have a shape that's based on this, but we've got a lone pair. So I'll draw my central uh, sulfur atom, and I'm then going to draw it in a similar way. I'm going to draw my oxygen to the left and my oxygen coming down. Bear in mind these would actually be double bonds in this case, and I would have a lone pair this time, which is up here. Remember, lone pairs cause extra repulsion. So these oxygen atoms aren't going to be able to spread out as much as they possibly can do. They're going to be compressed ever so slightly together, which reduces the bond angle by around 2 degrees, 218 degrees. This time, um, I've got three atoms, but they're not in a straight line. I would call this an example of a bent molecule. The next example is a really, really important one. It comes up all the time, and um, the most common example you will see is something like CH4. But there are lots of examples of this. Um, but here we're going to have a central carbon atom. My four hydrogen, or my four uh, bonded pairs are going to repel as much as they possibly can do. And in this case, I get a shape which looks a bit like this. My bonded pairs will all repel as much as they can do. And I get a shape which I call tetrahedral. Tetra, tetra means four, like a tetra pack. Tetrahedral means shape. So tetrahedral. In this case, the bond angle is about 109 and a little bit, let's call it 109.5 degrees. You will see um, some of the uh, numbers given for that, but just remember it's 109 and a little bit. So if I were to have three bonded pairs, one lone pair, the shape is going to be based on this tetrahedral. However, I'm going to have um, a lone pair, which I can draw at the top. So an example of this would be ammonia, NH3. So let's draw my nitrogen atom in the middle, and again my hydrogen's coming down. So even though this looks like a similar, sh well, it's a similar shape. Even though it looks the same, remember that because I've got a lone pair this time, it's going to cause extra repulsion. On an average, a lone pair reduces the bond angle by about two degrees. So here the bond angle is going to be about uh, 107 degrees between um, all of these hydrogen atoms. The shape again I've got three bonded pairs so it's going to be called it's going to be based on trigonal it's not planar this time this is on with the shape here remember we're not going to be able to see that lone pair it's almost like a pyramid so I call this trigonal pyramidal right um, the next case I've got two bonded pairs two lone pairs the most common example H2O or water um, again the shape is going to be bent I've got a central oxygen atom I'm going to have a uh, Let's kind of do it the same, roughly the same as that. I'll have a hydrogen coming down, which is the equivalent of this one. I'll have one coming towards me. I'll then have a lone pair at the top and a lone pair coming down there. Um, again, I've got two lone pairs this time, so I have extra repulsion from these lone pairs, which will reduce the bond angle to about 104.5 degrees. Again, I've got three atoms which aren't in a straight line. This is a bent molecule. If we increase the number of bonded pairs we have to five, we get some um, slightly different and some slightly unusual shapes. So if we ha have five bonded pairs, zero lone pairs, we get a shape that's called trigonal bipyramidal. And what that looks like is this. If we had PF5, we would have um, our central phosphorus, fluorine at the top, fluorine at the bottom, and then it would be trigonal about this uh, central point. 
So similar to what it was in BF3, we would have our fluorines arranged in a planar fashion about this central phosphorus. Um, we've actually got two different sets of bond angles here between uh, the top and bottom fluorine, the central one, the bond angle is 90 degrees. However, between the central fluorines here, we have a bond angle of 120 degrees. If we have four bonded pairs and one lone pair, we get a special a seashore, a seashore, a seashore, a seesaw shape. And in this case, we'd have a central <laughs> sulfur. I'm sorry about that. And um, we'd have fluorine atoms at the top, at the bottom, uh, like so. Um, However, we then have a lone pair about um, the sulphur. Again, we'd have one coming towards us, one going away. And this lone pair will reduce the bond angle slightly. So now we would have a bond angle of about 89 degrees between the top fluorines and the central ones, and the bond angle between these two would be reduced to about 119 degrees. If we have three uh, bonded pairs and two lone pairs, the, um, we get a T-shaped uh, molecule. So in this case, we have a central iodine. Um, we still have our, um, in this case, our fluorines at the top and at the bottom. We would have a chlorine at the side, but we would then have two lone pairs of electrons like so. Um, and again, these would do a good job of um, reducing the bond angles here. So the bond angle between these two would be roughly 88 degrees. And you can see it's almost like a T-shape coming in from this end. Right, back to having uh, only bonded pairs. If we have a uh, molecule with six bonded pairs, zero lone pairs, it is octahedral, which is a very important shape, especially when we talk about transition metals. Um, in this case, we've got SF6. And here we have a fluorine at the top and the bottom because these want to repel as much as possible we actually end up with a planar section which is a square shape about this central um, about the central atom so these four are in a plane but we've got fluorine going up and a fluorine going down this is octahedral if you're five bonded pairs one lone pair um, our lone pair would be at the top or the bottom this time. We would have a fluorine coming up. And again, we would get our square shape about the centre here. Sorry, I should have um, I should I should have said above, actually all the bond angles in SF, um, SF6, every single one of them are on 90 degrees. If you were to make that other modeling module, you would be able to see that nice and clearly. So all the bond angles in here, are 90 degrees. In here they are reduced ever so slightly, roughly 89 degrees. The final one we need to do is if we have four bonded pairs and two lone pairs. Um, I actually got asked this one at my university interview um, and thankfully I, uh, I did kind of know it and could churn it off which, which was nice. Because lone pairs want, uh, want to repel as much as possible we actually have the lone pair at the top and the bottom in this case. Uh, our fluorines would be arranged in a square fashion about this central xenon atom. This is a quite a rare example where we have a noble gas which is one with bonds. Um, again, these fluorines are planar, they're flat about the central xenon atom. So if you looked at this um, um, if you looked at this from the side it would just appear completely flat. Therefore it's planar again and we have a square arrangement of fluorine atoms about the central xenon. Okay, that's taken a while. Um, make sure you do learn them, have a look at, have a look at them. Um, I'm just going to pick a couple of examples and uh, we'll have a look at what the exam, examiner would actually want you to say. So if they were to ask you for the um, an explanation of the shape of um, Atria Plus, we'll take this one as our example. What you would do is you would say Atria Plus has got three bonded pairs of electrons and one lone pair of electrons. And you would have to say um, um, extra repulsion uh, from lone pairs from lone pair compared to bonded pairs.
So extra pulse from the lone pair compared to bonded pairs, um, which reduces the bond angle. And let's have a little think. We've got three bonded pairs, we've got one lone pair. This is going to be based on tetrahedral. So what I'm going to do is draw my central oxygen atom. Um, I am going to imagine that my lone pair is going up. And I've got three bonded pairs coming off to the sides, like so. You need to make sure you put your positive charge in if it's a charged molecule. Um, Remember, if it was tetrahedral, the bond angle would have been about 109.5 degrees because it is um, uh, it has a lone pair that reduces the uh, bond angle between these hydrogen atoms to about 107 degrees. So your mark's going to be for getting the shape correct, um, suggesting a sensible bond angle. Um, you would get penalised right at 109. Um, anything a few degrees below that is fine. Um, and you'd also get marks for saying that the lone pair is causing extra repulsion compared to the bonded pairs. Make sure you do say compared to bonded pairs of electrons, which reduces the overall bond angle between the um, of the of the HOH bond. So that's just one example. Have a, have a look at those. Use the rules we've gone through there and you should be fine.